Welcome to JASPER, the Joint Actinide Shock Physics Experimental Research Facility, operated by a team under the leadership of the Nevada National Security Site and Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory for the National Nuclear Security Administration. JASPER is an experimental facility at the Nevada National Security Site, devoted to shock physics studies of plutonium at high pressures. Located 80 miles northwest of Las Vegas, Nevada, JASPER resides in the south central region of the Nevada National Security Site. The heart of JASPER is the two-stage gas gun, measuring 65 feet long. JASPER consists of several components. The breech is the first stage of the gas gun. Gunpowder is placed inside to drive the overall experiment. The pump tube is filled with a light gas, typically hydrogen, and is the main driving force for firing the projectile down the launch tube. The launch tube guides the high-velocity projectile to the actinide target. The nested confinement systems are at the end of the gun, where the experiment is located. The primary target chamber and the secondary confinement chamber assure that no target materials escape following an experiment. A JASPER experiment takes less than a second to execute. The SCC pressure is below 79 millitor. Three, two, one, fire. All electric bolts. The data collected within that short time allows researchers to create more accurate models that can predict aging effects, overall performance, and the safety of stockpiled nuclear weapons. The following animation of a JASPER experiment shows how the two-stage gas gun creates unique physical conditions important to the nation's stockpile stewardship program. A 10-pound piston is inserted into the gun's breech to be followed by a gunpowder assembly filled with standard military propellant. This assembly will provide the driving force to push the piston down the pump tube. After the breech plug is installed, the breech is sealed. From the control room, a firing pulse is sent to the breech gun. This pulse starts a series of events that ignite the propellant. The pressure within the breech reaches more than 500 atmospheres. As the piston accelerates down the pump tube, the hydrogen gas is compressed and heated, creating the driving force for the second stage of the gas gun. At the end of the pump tube, the piston reaches the end of the acceleration reservoir, which gradually reduces in diameter, thus increasing the gas pressure. When the compressed gas reaches a pressure of 10,000 pounds per square inch, a rupture valve breaks and propels a 15-gram projectile down the launch tube. The pressure in the acceleration reservoir continues to rise to well over 100,000 psi. The piston extrudes into the acceleration reservoir, creating a seal. At the end of the launch tube, the projectile enters the secondary confinement chamber, from which all air has been evacuated. This chamber is eight feet in diameter and serves as a secondary barrier against any release of material to the environment. At this point, the projectile is traveling up to 8 kilometers per second, or 18,000 miles per hour. For comparison, this speed is approximately 10 times faster than a bullet from a standard hunting rifle. As the projectile travels through a free flight zone, a continuous wave X-ray system detects the projectile. This system serves as the primary trigger for both the diagnostic and confinement systems. The two flash X-rays photograph the projectile in flight. Both the time between the flashes and distance traveled by the projectile are measured to an accuracy of more than 99.9%. This information allows the experimenter to precisely determine the projectile velocity. The projectile then passes through the ultra-fast closure valve system. This system closes within 80 microseconds to prevent material from escaping. Receiving a signal from the continuous wave X-ray system, 12 detonators ignite a layer of high explosives surrounding a soft aluminum tube. The explosives symmetrically crush the tube, creating a seal and isolating the target material. When the projectile hits the target, the impact produces a high-pressure shock wave millions of times the atmospheric pressure at Earth's surface. Let's take a closer look at what happens as the projectile hits the plutonium target. At impact, 
Ejecta from the target are propelled backward at nearly the same speed as the projectile. The ultra-fast closure valve system is designed to close just behind the projectile to prevent any plutonium from escaping. In some experiments, the target resembles a top hat. This design allows researchers to determine when the shock wave reaches the front and back surfaces of the plutonium sample. Electrical pins measure the shock velocity precisely. Data to support the stockpile stewardship program are collected within a fraction of a microsecond. The arrow shows the difference in shock arrival times between the front and back surfaces. These data are used to determine the equation of state of plutonium. Following an experiment, everything in the primary target chamber is turned into rubble. This chamber is removed from the secondary confinement chamber and disposed of as waste. The JASPER facility can now be prepared for the next experiment.